Okay, so what is the single largest condition that impacts every woman in India? If not every, then at least one in every five women in India. It's PCOS. And that, remember, one in five is an outdated figure. It was last checked back in 2019. PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome affects millions of women around the world. India, especially urban India, is no different. So this September, which is PCOS Awareness Month, we are getting you the basics and the remedies. PCOS is much more than just irregular periods or trouble with fertility. It can impact weight, skin, mood. But let's not mistake it that just getting above a certain age doesn't mean that you will be impacted by PCOS. The long-term implications of PCOS could be dangerous. Also, there are different kinds of PCOS really out there. But you should know that PCOS is a lifestyle disorder and thus can be reversed can be fixed. It's all about natural solutions and lifestyle changes that can make a difference. Right, so from what we eat to how you manage your stress and your sleep, today TBC is going to be bringing you the practical tips that can help you improve the symptoms that you're dealing with. It can be very confusing, it can even be overwhelming, but the key to remember is that small changes in this case can have a huge, huge impact. And the key here is that everybody's body is different. So obviously what's going to work for one person might not work for others. That's why we're very, very excited to bring on experts today to give you tailor-made advice. Whether you're battling from constant sugar cravings, you're dealing with skin issues like acne or eczema, or you're just trying to get your energy back. We've hopefully got all the tips for you right here on the show. As we said earlier, we've brought in experts. First, we'll be talking to one of the very, very best in the field. This is Dr. Rishma Dhillan Pai, a top gynecologist. She's going to help us understand what's really going on inside the body when you have PCOS. She's also going to help us hopefully identify hmm. the type what you're dealing with and what can be causing those frustrating symptoms. So let's just go over to her. Doctor, thank you for joining us this morning, bright and early on the show. Doctor, tell us, before we go ahead, first, just give our audiences a definition to work with. What is PCOS? So essentially, it is one of the commonest endocrine or hormonal disorders in young women. Uh, it can have many different presentations. Uh, the girl who comes to me may have some or all of the symptoms or problems associated with the condition. It's a pretty common condition and there are many factors behind it. We don't really know why it happens to a particular girl. Very often it could be genetic, uh, some element of genetic. Very often it is also environmental. It is lifestyle. Hmm. If the girl has an unhealthy lifestyle, hmm. uh, you know, weight gain, not having a healthy diet, not exercising, not sleeping well, environmental pollutants, uh, all kinds of uh, issues put together will actually aggravate or worsen a pre-existing polycystic ovarian syndrome. So PCOS essentially is something which is there within you. It's the uh, sort of setting of hormones that you have. And the ovaries in these patients, not all, but many of these girls will have what we call polycystic ovarian morphology, which means the ovaries are usually larger, bigger volume, and they have this multiple tiny cysts yeah. all along the outside, like a necklace surrounding the ovary. So these cysts, if you will, mm. they actually produce mm. hormone. They have a lot more male hormone, and which is why, uh, you know, the balance between the male and female hormone is changed. A lot more of male hormone mm. in almost the entire group of girls suffering from PCOS. So, because the male hormone is more, very often they have more of um, acne, oily skin, facial hair, very, very common in uh, these girls, you know, more body hair, mm. facial hair. That is because of the male hormone. Also, a common factor mm. in many of these young women is insulin insensitivity. Mm. That is the basic pathology behind this problem. All right. You know, so a lot of things like acne, facial hair and the rest of it are just signs on what's happening to your body. That's not actually the problem, which is what people sort of don't understand it. But Dr. Bai, uh, help us understand this better. At what age can girls start off, uh, you know, begin to start seeing signs of PCOS and at 
at what time should you say that listen now it's become serious let me go see a gynec so very often we have girls for example 13 14 coming to us with very irregular periods and because you know periods start for example by the age of 11 hmm. 10 or 11 and by 12 13 they're not getting regular periods the patients the parents bring the girls but it's too early to diagnose pcs at that time so we should say that after you start the menstruation at least 2 years wait for the periods to regularize then if it's still irregular then you can start hmm. looking at uh, you know uh, the diagnosis of some hormonal problem like a pcos very often young girls have anyway what we call multi cystic ovaries there are many cysts in the ovary it may not be a full grown pcos but because the girls are just growing they're developing it could be multi cystic and that may uh, improve or resolve on its own so don't rush into the diagnosis of pcos in very very young girls at least wait for a few years of menstruation and then uh, investigate for pcos hmm dr pai are the Good are the point. manifestations that we're talking about right now are they completely reversible so i often tell the patients that i cannot cure pcos but we can manage it hmm. very very efficiently hmm. so much so that you may not even know or remember that you are suffering from pcos so it is a very well controlled condition but hmm. if you say that oh i have ceased to have pcos i don't have pcos anymore in my body may be difficult because your ovaries look a certain way it's like if i have a particular facial feature i can't change that similarly if your ovaries look a particular way you cannot really take away that look or the volume or the you know the number of cysts in the ovaries but you can improve mm. almost all the symptoms so if i can make her skin good if i can take the acne away if i can improve the facial hair reduce them completely if the periods become regular if her weight is uh, you know normal range if she becomes pregnant when she wants to then what is the problem there is no problem right so i think we can let's say we can manage pcos very well even though you may not say that you can take hmm. away or completely cure the disease ah that's interesting so it might not be completely reversible but there are ways of managing it that means there are ways in which you can sort of put your hormones in check and manage that so give us some natural remedies natural ways in which one can keep our hormones in that perfect symphony hmm. yeah so let's say the most important thing and the number one recommendation for pcos is lifestyle modification so if the person decides that i'm going to eat healthy i'm going to exercise regularly if she's overweight which many of the pcos girls are then if they lose even 5 to 10% of their body weight there will be a huge change in the uh, symptoms of pcos so if they can have a good lifestyle part of the problem is already solved the other part of the problem we can easily solve with medication so there are medications obviously and not nothing risky or dangerous very comfortably we can reduce their acne their facial hair we can get the periods regular and if they are trying to conceive as they're a little older we can help them to conceive as well with some medication sometimes it's just oral tablets so it's not such a big deal the problem is that uh, you know it it is an ongoing thing it's not like if i treat them or give them medication today they are sorted for the rest of their life there are issues at every stage of life so like i said a young girl mm. typically with come with irregular periods facial hair acne you know things like that not all of them are overweight 50% of pcos girls have weight issues the other 50% are actually thin what we call lean pcos mm. those girls have a lot of male hormone problems so they'll have mm. more of the male hormone features like facial hair etc body hair and maybe not have insulin insensitivity mm-hmm. or diabetes so once these young girls grow up then in the reproductive age group they come with the problem of difficulty in conceiving and of course irregular uh, periods once that phase is over then these girls are very very prone to diabetes so mm. doctor what would be your tips if one were to come to you and ask you how does one actually maintain a harmony of the hormones inside their body so we we very often talk about harmony of hormones but it's not as simple as that because how uh, other than the lifestyle change which the patients 
really has to do for the rest of her life. And I think this is one of the reasons why PCOS has really, uh, you know, sort of uh, increased massively because the lifestyle has changed. A lot of junk food, a mm. lot of irregular hours, sleeping late, getting up late, uh, you know, uh, not having uh, that much of fitness goals. And so that has caused a major increase in PCOS, which mm. we see now. But uh, I feel if, if we manage that lifestyle and we regularly see our doctor, and we mm. follow instructions. Sometimes it's medication, sometimes it's something else. See, there are many different, you cannot start a 15 year old girl on a medication and put her on that medication for the rest of her life, you know, because PCOS yeah. is a lifelong condition. So you can't do that, which is why at every different phase, mm. you need a little different help and support. So the lifestyle mm. modification continues throughout your life. But as mm. a young girl, I may give you something for her skin and your hair and period regularization. Then when she comes for pregnancy, We'll give her maybe a ovulation inducing drug, very simple, maybe just four or five days in a month, she takes it and she may become pregnant. So that phase is different. As she gets older, we'll make sure mm. her periods are regular. We we'll make sure the lining of the uterus is not becoming very thick. Check for cancer of the uterus, you know, make sure all that is not happening. Always regularly check the sugar levels for diabetes. Because like I told you, the basic problem mm. is insulin insensitivity, which is also the basic problem with diabetes. So these patients are typically pre-diabetic, especially if they are mm. obese. And so take care that she doesn't go into mm. uh, getting full-blown diabetes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and the same problem with thyroid as well, right? I mean, it's a it's a circle. One impacts the other, and one has to sort of uh, you know start there. Uh, very good points there, Doctor Pai. But uh, can I just also understand from you what, according to you, is the biggest misconception about PCOS? A lot of myths have been busted, uh, but it continues to be a disease that so many are impacted by, and perhaps not all understand the extent to. So one is that um, um, it, it can be cured, it can't be cured. Second is that um, hmm. every girl with hmm. uh, PCOS is obese, overweight. And if you're not obese and overweight, then you don't have PCOS, which is again wrong. Like I said, 50% of PCOS girls are slim because they don't have insulin insensitivity right. because we have different phenotypes, different types of PCOS. And you may fall into the category which has no insulin problems and no diabetes risk very much and you have only the male hormone so these are the issues and the other thing is that you know you take medication for a period of time and you'll be cured of PCOS that is really not happening it's a lifelong uh, care that you have to take lifelong health uh, healthy lifestyle that you have to mm. maintain exercise diet as a way mm. of life and regular follow-ups with your doctor to make mm. sure that none of the long-term problems that can happen are actually happening to you. Okay. All right, we'll leave it there for the moment. Dr. Pai, thank you so much for joining us uh, and giving us your perspective and so many eye-opening things about PCOS. But let's bring in Tanisha Bhava now. She's an award-winning certified nutrition coach uh, and she's a gut and hormone health specialist, founder of TAN365. Good morning, Tanisha. Lovely to have you. Uh, we you just heard Dr. Pai lay down so many different forms, so many different ways uh, in which it impacts life of women. And I, you know, the major takeaway for us is that it's, it sort of comes up in different ways at different life stages of a girl. But before everybody gets overwhelmed with now that I have to live with PCOS for life, are there some uh, changes that you want to recommend which will help us keep it in check? Certainly. So, uh, like the doctor as well said before, uh, PCOS has to be managed once you get the diagnosis. And it's very uh, easy to put it into remission. So your symptoms can very easily be managed uh, should you choose to. And uh, with respect to PCOS clients that I have, I follow um, an approach which is known as a low glycemic diet and another approach which is an anti-inflammatory diet. So I'll break it down for you. The low glycemic diet is essentially uh, done for those people who have the insulin resistant kind of PCOS, which is at the backbone of most PCOS cases today. So in that case, we try and reduce the carbohydrate intake, basically re reduce the refined grains from the diet. 
and we focus on fats, fiber, and protein. So your healthy fats being uh, avocado, coconut oil, ghee, butter, uh, and coconut cream, for instance, nuts and seeds, your protein, uh, non-vegetarian and vegetarian sources, fiber from fruits and veggies. And the switch that we make here is from refined grains to complex carbs. So we go into quinoa, millets, bajra, amaranth, because they have a better blood glucose control. Right. So that is the uh, low glycemic diet. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. second one is an anti-inflammatory protocol because inflammation is also at the heart of PCOS, which cannot be discounted. You are inflamed. That's why you have this disorder. So the to reduce inflammation, it's very important to mm. firstly cut out the sources of inflammation, right? So the the few sources are processed food, sugar, alcohol, caffeine, um, refined uh, grains like all-purpose flour. So those have to come down, and only then will you see a reduction in inflammation. And what you must add is. Like I mentioned, the healthy fats, very important uh, because healthy fats help your good gut microbe thrive and also help your hormonal health. Your hormones are yeah. fat soluble and lots of women actually, uh, Indian conventional diets don't uh, have too many fats and protein. So I make people add that into their diet. Secondly is fiber like veggies and fruits. Because the more fiber you have, the better detoxification of estrogen you're going to have. And that's going to help you with your hormonal balances directly. And um, thirdly is um, nuts and seeds. Very important for PCOS and any other hormonal imbalance, in fact. Because they have a lot of minerals, uh, vitamins, and uh, they are sources of protein and fats too. And lastly, if you're non-vegetarian, it's super important to have cage-free grass-fed poultry and not the ones which are commercially raised because it can disrupt your omega-6 to omega-3 ratios. So these are some um, uh, some uh, things to keep in mind when you're trying to follow an anti-inflammatory protocol or uh, with respect mm. to nutrition. Tanisha, can you tell us um, when there are aggravating factors taking place in your life? So by that I mean, for example, if you're not being able to get the amount of sleep that you should get or your life is very stressful because the doctor we just spoke to right now said those factors matter. What can we do with nutrition that can possibly affect those other factors? If we can't control, for example, the amount of sleep we're getting or the stress we have in our lives, how much can nutrition play a role in those cases? See, nutrition is, you know, 80% of the game, right? Uh, if if you know you're not sleeping well, you don't have time to work out. And if you if you leave the, uh, you know, your alcohol, caffeine, bring down your sugar and processed food and you swap it with all the items I previously mentioned, it could help you to a large extent. I'm not saying that sleep and working out is not important. It's only for those women or uh, who do not have the time to. Mm. But having said that, if you do what I just said before, that will assist you anyway. Um, and if you do have the time, sleep and exercise and stress management is extremely important when it comes to PCOS because there are different types of PCOS and if you have the adrenal fatigue PCOS, uh, you really need to manage your stress well and that stress management there is very, very important. And sometimes I've seen women even reduce the workload because uh, if you, it really depends on your priorities and if you want to heal this at a deeper level. Hmm. Okay. Right. So, Tanisha, then, you know, at a time when so much is being spoken about glycemic index, can you shed some light for our viewers on what exactly does that mean, especially uh, yes. for women? And also so much uh, that I've been reading off late on it's not just about what you're eating, but the order of the food you eat that impacts your glycemic index. Yes. So firstly, before I come to glycemic index, why should you have a diet uh, which is low in glycemic index is because you always want to manage your blood sugar levels. Anything we eat causes our blood sugar to go up and we do not want the blood sugar to stay in our stream and our bloodstream for long. So hence, you want to eat foods which do not spike your blood sugar in the first place, right? So uh, for that, I just mentioned you should have more fats, protein and fiber. So that's the important one. But food sequencing, like hmm. you just mentioned, is extremely important to uh, to show to reduce the spike from your food. For example, uh, fiber first. So always start with a bowl of vegetables. Then comes your fats. So if you can, if you have avocado or coconut on the side, and your grains last. If you have the food in the opposite order, grains grains first, you will spike your sugar. 
so uh, that is a, a lifestyle change one can make to do food sequencing mm. Tarisha, thank you. This is it's it's so important mm. to ground this for us because especially what uh, Sonal and you were talking about a little earlier, the order that we eat. There's been so much content around that these days online, but to yes, understand, yeah. okay, this is how to actually do it, implement yeah. it in your lives. Thank oh, you so yes. much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'd also like to give a big thank you to Dr. Pai who joined us a little earlier. Okay, let's move on now from this 